My guest at this time is Indiana Republican Congressman Larry Bouchon. He's a freshman representing the Hoosier State's 8th Congressional District, and he's also a surgeon uh, in uh, his trade before coming to the U.S. Congress. We want to get his thoughts now as the critical tenets and really the entirety of the president's health care bill is now set to come before the U.S. Supreme Court, most likely in the coming term. And Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. Well, you're welcome. I'm happy to be here with you. Well, let's back up in time just a little bit. To what extent was the president's health care bill uh, a major factor in your decision to run for Congress? Well, it was a, it was a very important part of my decision. Uh, there were some other reasons, but mainly, uh, you know, I had concerns about the direction of health care in the country, and I felt very strongly that more health care professionals needed to be part of the conversation. Do you believe that health care professionals would have said or helped to steer the president in a different direction? What are the parts of the bill that you believe that uh, you and your colleagues would have been able to provide a whole lot better insight on? Well, I think the, big, the, the overall big picture uh, is something that uh, we in the health care industry would disagree with is the premise that uh, the health care system should be uh, essentially taken over by the federal government. I mean, I'm a very strong believer in the private sector. Uh, everyone in the health care industry knows that we have some significant issues to address in the health care system and we need changes. I think we would try to sway the president away from a government approach to the health care uh, reform, and uh, that's the big picture. I know you're not a lawyer, but both sides here seem pretty confident that they're going to win. How do you expect this to shake out at the Supreme Court? Well, I, I personally believe that uh, that the uh, individual mandate is unconstitutional, and I'm very confident uh, that the Supreme Court will rule in, in the, the favor of 26 states, including my own, and the National Federation of Independent Business. Uh, and now, uh, as you know, the the uh, Obama administration has also uh, uh, appealed to the Supreme Court. So I, I'm pretty optimistic. I think that uh, their argument uh, utilizing the Commerce Clause is uh, very thin, and, uh, and I think will prevail. In terms of how your constituents are dealing with this issue, I know, as you mentioned before, there's a whole lot of other issues going on right now, obviously the economy, the nation's debt, uh, all sorts of other things going on. Uh, in, in terms of next year's elections, how big of an issue do you expect this to be, regardless of how the court decides? I think it's going to be a big issue. And the reason is because as it relates to the unemployment, uh, I can tell you by talking to businesses around my district that one of the levels of uncertainty that is, being, that is, that is created is from uh, the uncertainty as it relates to the health care bill. And I think that that will be a major part of the conversation, uh, whether or not the Supreme Court rules that it's unconstitutional or not, because I think that uh, the administration's view, I think, sounds like is even without the, per- the individual mandate, they feel like the rest of the health care bill will be uh, viable. I-, I don't, but uh, it's very important. Uh, we cannot get it, people back to work in this country without taking away the uncertainty for job creators. And one of those is, what's the future hold as it relates to the health care bill? What do you say to those, and the president's certainly one of these, who will point out that uh, right now, uh, folks who previously had the pre-existing conditions that kept them from getting coverage uh, have an easier time of doing that. Uh, folks can stay on their parents' coverage up till age 26. Essentially, uh, the less controversial measures of this went into effect a lot sooner than the ones that people have a big problem with. So uh, he's going to be contending, as well as other Democrats, that uh, by the court either ruling this or Republicans promising to repeal the president's health care plan if you have the majority and the White House in 2013, uh, that you're rolling back some very popular and uh, important provisions. How would you respond to that? I would respond with that we agreed with some of those things uh, beforehand as change as uh, significant things that needed to be addressed, and that uh, we will uh, address those immediately so that uh, uh, the citizens that are affected by the pre-existing condition situation will have will be able to get adequate health care coverage. Uh, I personally was in favor of uh, allowing children to be on their parents until age 26 at a reasonable at a reasonable cost. Uh, so. You know, there are a few areas of agreement, and they were, there were areas of agreement beforehand uh, that I think uh, are not a, enough of an argument uh, to say that we need to continue with this uh, health care bill, the Affordable Care Act, because of a few areas of agreement which the Republicans have said will immediately uh, be addressed. So I think it's a, it's a very poor argument. 
And the big picture is, is this is a government approach to a private sector issue uh, that not to, not only is going to affect uh, businesses uh, that are trying to hire, but it's affecting states as we allow for expansion of of the uh, Medicaid system. My state, for example, estimating three point six billion dollars in additional costs that we can't afford. So uh, I think uh, I would. Uh, that's how I would address that uh, that question. A couple quick questions before we let you go, sir. First of all, if the court strikes down just the individual mandate, so the other provisions uh, remain in place, including the employer mandate, will that do anything to give certainty, or will we just be, in a large extent, where we already were? I think it'll be, I, I think unless it becomes evident, uh, the Obama administration agrees, that it becomes evident that the, that, uh, the Affordable Care Act really can't be fully implemented without the individual mandate. I don't think it changes the picture very much. I think that they think it can. I would argue that it cannot because a good portion of the funding from this for the bill, I think, was uh, going to be from people actually not getting health insurance and paying fines and fees on their taxes. It's a new tax on a lot of people. And so I don't think it will change much because their view it will be that uh, – we can continue on with the Affordable Care Act. My view will be uh, that we can't because it makes it even more financially uh, undoable. I mean, uh, uh, doable. We will not be able to afford it uh, without without that provision. Last question, uh, and this is goes back also to your expertise as a physician. One of the things the president likes to boast is that when this is fully implemented, an additional, I think his number is 30 million people, will have coverage, but a huge chunk of that will be on the Medicaid rolls, and we already have uh, providers who refuse Medicaid and even some Medicare patients because the reimbursement rate is so low. So if you add that many more people to the rolls, how much medical care and, and how good will it actually be? That's the other thing that's very important about the president's solution for the for health care, the health care issues. It's, an, it's a providing coverage uh, solution, but doesn't do anything to control costs and doesn't do anything really to uh, help people access the health care system. The Medicaid expansion is a classic example. Just because you have Medicaid does not mean that you have access uh, to low-cost quality health care. Many physicians, many providers out there already won't accept Medicaid patients. It'll be even less acceptable once there's more people. And those people will still be relegated to high-cost emergency room care, which has not uh, uh, solved the problem. So uh, I, th- I think that uh, we're going to see even bigger problems with high-cost health care. And as you know, recently Kaiser just came out with a study saying health insurance premiums are going up. Uh, none of this surprises me because uh, the Affordable Care Act doesn't address the cost of health care. Well, Congressman, as you mentioned, uh, some critical policy questions, but also, of course, now a showdown at the Supreme Court over this. Uh, Sir, great to talk to you about it, and we look forward to chatting with you down the road. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Indiana Republican Congressman Larry Bouchon, a surgeon before being elected to Congress in Indiana's 8th Congressional District last year. I'm Greg Corumbus reporting for Radio America.